I just got a new plunge router specifically for making mortises for mortise and traditional mortise and tenon joinery. And unfortunately, the edge guide that I have already, the commercially available edge guide for my last plunge base router, doesn't fit this one. So today I'm going to use a couple scraps that I have here in the shop to hopefully not spend any more money other than what I already have here in the shop and make a uh, completely universal edge guide that can be adapted for any any router really. So like I said, I'm using what I have on hand. This piece of plywood is a little less than 12 inches wide, which is fine. It's half inch plywood and I'll just cut it to the length. For the fasteners, I'm using some quarter 20 uh, fasteners with some matching uh, wing nuts and a couple of washers. These washers are a little bit too big for these fasteners, but uh, in the interest of using what I have, that's what I have. I may get some, uh, some quarter inch fender washers to replace those down the road. And these are a little bit long, so I'll cut them to length, again, using what I have on hand. First thing I'll do is cut the plywood to an appropriate length, and then mark out all of the cuts needed for this particular jig. I'm cutting out the adjustment slots on the bandsaw, and to make sure that both slots are identical, I'm making the first cut to both slots first without moving the fence, and doing so by just flipping the board end for end after the first cut. Then I can move the fence to the second position and make the second cut and repeat flipping the board over to get the second cut perfect on the second slot. To finish out the slot, I'm using a slightly oversized drill bit to connect both bandsaw cuts and release the interior material of the slot. For the adjustable parallel guides, I'm using a couple pieces of scrap oak. I want the quarter by 20 fasteners to be threaded into the adjustable rails without the use of a tap. So I'm just going to use an undersized drill bit to drill a couple pilot holes. The only thing left to do is remove the mounting base, or the uh, base plate I should say, to the router and then use it as a guide to cut the mounting holes on the actual jig, mount the router, and then we're done. And all I gotta do is mount it and use it. And what I really like about this jig is that you can use it on any router you want. Just attach whatever uh, router base you're using to this particular jig and go ahead and use it. So if I wanted to use my, uh, my small trim router, then you just attach it with whatever mounting holes are needed for that particular router base. It's not specific to this particular router. So I have a piece of material in my vise, and say I want a mortise right here, then what you can do is set the jig into place, drop the bit where you want it, and position the whole base front and back 
so that the bit will cut where you want it to cut. Then loosen the front guide, push it into place, lock it down. Loosen the back guide, put it into place, and lock it down. And then once you have both guides set so that the bit is where you want it, then all you have to do is worry about plunging up and down and then moving left to right. This will track left and right on the workpiece and not wander front to back at all. So this concept isn't unique to me, obviously. People have been doing this for a long time. It's just the, the concept of this really fits what I want to accomplish with this particular plunge base. So I decided to make one for my shop. And it's a two-sided jig, obviously, but you can remove one side and use it as a one-sided jig as needed. Say if your material was wider in this direction and you only wanted one particular edge guide to work with. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. I have a free set of diagrams and plans for this. If you want them on my website, there's more info there. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.